DFM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. In this bulletin, Health Ministry notes improvements. Bogus agents worry consumer watchdog. And some welfare recipients not recertified. From the studios of FBC Suva, Ateda Lindua. The health ministry has grown tremendously in the past 10 years, boosting its capacity, increasing staff and enhancing service. Minister Dr. Ifremi Wangainabete says this was made possible by progressive budget increases. The health minister says they've made major upgrades to many facilities over the past decade and also increased manpower. In the last, from the 40th to the 50th year, we as a Minister of Health have changed very significantly in terms of the numbers of staff that we had. I keep on saying when I started, there's about 200 doctors. Now there's nearly, by next year, nearly 1,000 doctors that we'll have. You know, we've had more than 3,000 nurses. Uh, and we have the ability to keep on employing them because of the budget appropriation that's been given. Minister for Women, Children and Poverty Alleviation, Merseni Buniwanga, confirms there are still some social welfare recipients who have not been recertified. Buniwanga says this could be why some are missing out on their monthly allowances. The minister confirms the recertification program remains open for them and social welfare will continue to support members affected by COVID-19. Certification is uh, still ongoing. We still have people who still haven't recertified and uh, are coming forward uh, as uh, we speak. The impact of the COVID-19 pandemic has increased opportunities for bogus real estate agents. The Consumer Council confirms receiving 50 complaints valued at over $200,000 against unlicensed agents since January this year. Chief Executive Seema Shandil says fraudulent activities by bogus real estate agents are on the rise again. What they actually do is they will take the, the potential buyers to places or sites where they are a piece of land or houses and they'll pretend that, you know, they, are, uh, they have been assigned to sell it and they will take substantial amount of deposits. So uh, the, the potential buyers will only come to know about it when they will require documentations to present to uh, you know, the financial institutions whereby they are opting or deciding to take loans from. Changes in consumer behavior due to COVID-19 continue to affect businesses such as postal services. Post Fiji Chief Executive Aniruda Bansord says with the borders still closed, Fijians are relying more on online services for purchasing and mailing. He adds current technological innovation during this time has greatly affected their revenue, but they remain positive in diversifying their services. As any business, Post Fiji has gone through uh, and still going through a tough time during this pandemic. When the flights stop, borders close, and that's where eventually our mail stop closed as well. Post Fiji business has be become a bit difficult onto that. This has affected postal services severely, where our revenue has a little bit dropped down onto that. A woman in her 40s will be produced in the Nasinu Magistrates Court today, charged with allegedly producing a $90,000 dishonored check. She has been charged with one count of causing a loss. The woman allegedly used the check to buy parts from a vehicle spare parts company. It was later discovered to be a dishonored check when taken to the bank to be deposited. Some of the parts purchased were recovered from a vacant house in Nadi by the Southern Division Task Force. A second person was questioned or has, has been questioned and released. In world news, social media app Twitter has flagged a tweet by U.S. President Donald Trump claiming he is now immune to COVID-19. Twitter says the post violates rules about spreading misleading and potentially harmful information. Up ahead, Sandrungu focuses on remaining rounds and Suva Volleyball back on track. Bula FM, number two and a series. Bula FM, number two and a series.
With only three rounds remaining in the Skipper Cup competition, Ram Sami Suva is anticipating tough battles as they continue to lead the points table. Facing rivals Naita Siri in round 12 this week, young flanker Daniela Sundrungu says they expect the competition to be more intense than when it started. The 20-year-old says they will go down to the wire to defend the cup. We're expecting some uh, tough uh opponent from the Nita Siri against Nita Siri because we are leading the points table and uh, <laughs> yeah we'll work very hard train very hard Fijian Flyers Marika Koroimbete and Filippo Ndongunu scored the only tries for the Wallabies in their Bledisloe Cup 6 16 all draw with the All Blacks yesterday the second test will be held at Eden Park in Auckland New Zealand on Sunday now Smith, away for Mwanga, McKenzie, quick hands, now Barrett, Johnny Barrett for the corner, All Blacks in. Taylor, just in Australian territory, Taylor gets it round, finds Bridge, puts him in a big gap, slings it off to Aaron Smith, Smith and White, the two halfbacks, Smith reaching and Aaron Smith, that is sensational. So White releases for Tamua. O'Connor up in his face. This will be interesting. Now he gets it away to Corabetti. Corabetti from the corner. That is a great try. White goes again. Now Phillip. Phillip, good run again by Matt Phillip. But a breezy ball has been lost. And it's flicked out. And Dungunu driving. That's a try. Unavailability of venues is the biggest challenge faced by the Suva Netball Association. The association has rounded up its weekly league games and is looking towards their business house and inter-association meets. President Georgina Lasanga says it will be a challenge to book venues for their upcoming meets as other sporting associations push for venues for their events. New venue has been our challenge. We've been so fortunate to have uh, eight rounds of uh, good weather. Uh, we had one round, which is last week. Uh, we struggled for venue. It goes to show that uh, sports, it's, it's big here in Fiji, and every sport is wanting to grow, and every sport is wanting to play, that the venues are limited, and there's a, you have to fight for your venue. The Suva Volleyball Association plans to join and compete in the Fiji Volleyball Sanctioned Tournaments. This is part of their initiative to revamp the association and its member clubs to keep their players and officials engaged in volleyball. Games Commissioner Iliesa Raketekete says they've noted a slight increase in the number of clubs joining them and next is getting those teams to participate in major tournaments. We are revamping it. Uh, we started last year. Last year we didn't join Fiji Volleyball, but this year we, we are going to join Fiji Volleyball and uh, be part of their uh, sanctioned tournaments. We can expect cloudy periods with some showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands today. Elsewhere, fine apart from isolated afternoon or evening showers and a chance of thunderstorms. That's FBC News Now. Join us again at 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. In times of crisis, you need news you can trust. Get the facts from FBC's TV, radio and digital news at fbcnews.com.fj, keeping Fijians connected with the truth. Have a good week. Bula FM, number two and a Bula FM, number two and a